Hello guys, I'm here again with Dr. Mark Ufua, a wildlife conservationist and a veterinarian to discuss the challenges of illegal bushmeat in Nigeria. Nice to be here again with you, Dr. Mark. So in our last chat, you explained how illegal bushmeat was negatively affecting the animals. Can you like shed more light on that? So there's one aspect of it, which is eating bushmeat locally, local consumption. Then bushmeat also is being exported to countries like in Asia and all that. That is a problem. Because when you're exporting, you're not looking at one, two, three, four, five animals. You're exporting you're looking in, in hundreds, in thousands, in large numbers to make your profit. So that is already also a problem. And this is what is driving extinction. We're losing our animals at an unprecedented rate. Are there specific animals that have been more affected than the others? We have whole species that are disappearing. Our pangolins are endangered, our gorillas are endangered, our chimpanzees are endangered, and our gorillas and chimpanzees are very unique species. So if we lose them, it's lost to the world forever. It saddens me because you see that there are countries that are raking in millions in dollars by just having these animals in their country. I know people that pay to go to Kenya. I know people that pay to go to Rwanda to go see wild animals. It's crazy. They are here in our country. We as a country, we have a lot of things that we are not even paying attention to. It's a paradox. When you talk about bushmeat, oh, stop illegal wildlife trade, people are quick to say poverty. But we do not know that it's this killing of the bushmeat that perpetuates poverty. How so? Please because explain. You made a mention of people spending good money yes, to, to, to go, go to other yes. countries to see these animals. Safari. An elephant in its lifetime can give you over one million dollars from tourism. But if you kill the elephant and sell the tusk and eat yeah, the How much meat, are you selling it for? It's we are richer if we keep our wildlife and ensure our biodiversity. Okay, so I've, I understand everything that we've spoken about, but how does this impact an average person? For instance, I'm going to read some comments. You can't tell people the government is starving not to look for alternate means of survival. Another person here is saying, we're African, so don't bring Onyibo lifestyle here. If Pangolin finished tomorrow, we will not die. We have real human issues like poverty, corruption, insecurity, I understand what we are talking about, but from their perspective now, why should they care? We think we humans are existing and then the animals are existing on their own. We fail to see the interdependence, how much we need the forest for us to thrive, how much we need the animals. And the more these animals are disappearing, the harder things get to, for us. For example, let me give you some animals that help us directly. Like the pangolins. One pangolin can eat up to 20,000 ants and termites in a day. You imagine what the entire population of pangolins would do. But by the time we eat up all the pangolins and kill them and sell them and wipe them out, so you find out that the ant population is going to explode. Then but you say, eh, fine, so we get um, pesticides and we can get rid of them. But the pesticides will kill the ants and termites and also kill some beneficial insects because it does not discriminate. Which in turn affects food production, so, which in turn affects food price. Price will go up. So you find out that things just get harder. And then another thing causing hardship for us today here in Nigeria is insecurity and terrorism. Do you know that proceeds made from wildlife crime, illegal wildlife trade, is used directly to finance terrorism. In Nigeria? In Nigeria and around the world. Because that's where they get the money without having to come into town. So you find out that as long as we're not getting the game right, these problems will continue. People often think we do this campaign to save animals because we love animals. But the real reason we're doing this campaign is humanity. We need to save ourselves. It's to save the world. What is the current challenge that we're facing? climate change. Yes. Do you know the activities of elephants and uh, gorillas? They help save our forests. And saving our forests means reducing carbon emission. Exactly. So you see that we save these animals, we save our forests, we're saving our lives. Yeah, we are actually saving ourselves. 
I hope this answer gives you enough reason. Yes, we are hungry. Yes, we are. But the solution is not to make things worse. Exactly. I mean, that's it. That's it for another episode. Thank you so, so much, Dr. Thank Mark. You. See it's you again next time. <laughs>